Welcome back into the Enrichment Sports Source. This segment of our show brought to you by Madisonville Marine, Aqua Patio Pontoons, Apex pan Pontoons, Bullet Bass Boats, G3 Aluminum Boats, Suncatcher Pontoons, Skeeter Bass Boats. You name it, they've got it at Madisonville Marine, the best place in all of East Tennessee to buy a boat. Uh, not only for that selection, but also for the prices. You're going to get a great deal from Madisonville Marine, and you're going to get great customer service. Go down and see Joe Special, Steve Sloan, and the guys at Madisonville Marine. All right, I want to welcome in the newest member of our basketball team, Mark Pankratz. Mark uh, played for Bruce Pearl at uh, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, at Wisconsin-Milwaukee. Mm -hmm. uh, you also coached under Pearl here, coached under Conzo Martin here. Remember the team. Tell folks what your duties were at UT. Wow, well, in my seven years, I've done a little bit of everything. So uh, uh, I was the director of scouting the last few years under Coach Morton. Uh, under Coach Pearl, I was assistant to the head coach among video coordinator and some other things. So did a bunch of different things. A lot of uh, video and scouting, um, also big hand in the schedule making, all that mm -hmm. kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, I want to take this uh, first segment with you, and you're going to be with us as Isaiah Victor and Don DeVoe will. You'll be back with us throughout the basketball season. Uh, but I want to take this first segment and just kind of run through and get quick takes on some of the main players on this roster because you've been over there. Yep. You know what they're expected to do, mm -hmm. expected to bring to the table. So let me start with Jerron Maimon. Back from a knee injury, how big of a positive is it that he's back, how big of a negative was it last year that he wasn't there? Uh, I think it's huge from a uh, spacing standpoint. Uh, his toughness, his leadership has been well documented. Uh, he's a guy that through tough times within the game, he's your coach on the floor. He's a guy that will uh, put guys in the right spots at all times. 100% back? Uh, I think that's opinion? to be determined. I think he's a guy that's gonna have to be uh, brought along throughout the season. Jarnell Stokes is the guy that's expected to benefit the most from Jerron Maimon's return, and Stokes had a good night last night, uh, put up some good numbers. Didn't look great against Xavier. He got the two early fouls, and he has a tendency when he gets the early fouls to kind of go into a shell. Mm -hmm. uh, is Jarnell Stokes, we know he's got the body. Uh, the coach last night for USC Upstate said he could be playing in the NFL. He's got the body. Is he mentally tough enough to be consistent on this team? Um, I think so. I think his, he's, again, it's just getting that feel for how refs are going to call it. Um, I think it was Coach Martin, once he made that kind of public acknowledgement last year of the refs need to call him a little bit different. And once they started realizing that, the game opened up for him and he was able to blossom. Jordan McRae, and we talked a little bit before the show. I'm going to see if you'll go there now. Jordan McRae, um, obviously a, a good scoring option for Tennessee, but they've got to decide what their offense is going to be. Who's it going to go through, mm -hmm. the guards or the guys down low? How does that impact Jordan McRae? Well, Jordan's an elite scorer. I think you've seen him really develop and mature under Coach Morton. Um, he's done a great job of just building his body and toughness. Um, but that is, the, that is, for me, the biggest decision that needs to be made is do you run it through Jordan? Do you run it through Jarnell? Jarnell gets in foul tro early foul trouble against Xavier. All of a sudden, floor opens up for Jordan. He's able to attack the basket. So um, I think Jordan is much better in open space um, where his athleticism and, and his ability to get to the rim is best. Um, but, you know, uh, we got two of the biggest guys, the best post players in the SEC. So that's kind of where we're, we, what we got to figure out. All right. Um, now the newcomers. Uh, Trey Golden sort of kind of run off the way you want to look at it. He got in trouble and didn't come back. Uh, now at Georgia Tech, Antonio Barton comes in from Memphis, drops in like manna from heaven. Um, the difference between the games, between Antonio Barton and Trey Golden. What does Barton offer that Golden didn't? Uh, and, uh, Barton will be better defensively than uh, Trey was, um, but I also think you saw that uh, Antonio has the ability to, to knock down big shots just like Trey was. Um, what I've been impressed by um, from my understanding is just how good of a guy Antonio's been and is how welcoming he's been to um, just stepping in, not trying to step on anybody's toes and just be a point guard, be a leader, try to help guys out. Um, even though he's had some success at, at different places. The other thing, he wasn't able to play in those preseason games due to uh, the exhibition games due to an injury. How much do you think that's impacted Tennessee's start this year? One and one start, uh, didn't look great at Xavier, didn't look great in the first half last night. Mm -hmm. As Barton becomes more acclimated, do you expect better things or? Oh, definitely, especially when you're talking about a point guard. Uh, I mean, it's much easier to do stuff in practice in Pratt Pavilion than all of a sudden you get on the road yeah in a hostile environment in Xavier. And it's just a simple thing is finding that outlet point guard where he's on the floor and, and just certain player tendencies. 
Robert Hubbs, five-star guy. Tennessee hasn't had many shooters, and we'll get into that a little bit in the next segment. They haven't had real shooters since uh, Chris Lofton and Juwan Smith, really. Mm -hmm. uh, Robert Hubbs, five-star guy. A lot of people expect him to come in and be one of those immediate success stories. Is that what he has? Is that what he has in store for the fans, or do you think this is going to be a little bit more like Scotty Hobson, where he's going to have to grow into that role and get ready for it? Well, I think the the nice thing about it is we have some leadership and some older guys on this team to where he doesn't have to, and nor should he. If we're going to be a good team, let's face it, we cannot be required be relying on a freshman to come in and score for us. We should be relying on Jarnell, Jaron, Jordan, Josh, Antonio, so on and so forth. I do think he has the ability. He is the best athlete that I've seen since I've been at Tennessee. Freak athlete. And you saw last night, he's a really good shooter, catch and shoot. Um, continue to work on his ball handling skills. He's going to leave here a great, great player. All right. Uh, Darius Thompson and Josh Richardson, who has a bigger impact this year? Um, I think Josh, uh, because I think that uh, as Antonio involves into his role, He's going to gobble up most of those minutes. I think Darius is going to end up being a really good player. Uh, but I think Josh, his defensive, he's just a, you know, last night you, you could see him come on on Ty Green and he made an impact. Uh, he's just a different type of player than the other, the other wings that we have. All right, very good. All right, that's Mark Pankratz. He'll be back in the next segment as we bring back Jimmy, Mike, and Chuck. We're going to talk a little bit more about this team. Talk about the, uh, the anger that kind of bubbled up as soon as they lost to Xavier on, uh, earlier this week. So we'll talk about all that next segment right back here on the Enrichment Sports Source. Come on back.